Hey, what's up, peeps? You're listening to the Let Loose with Lou podcast. I'm a full-time working woman, mother of three, and a wifey to one lucky man. My passion is getting to know people, listening to their stories, and learning from their points of view on life. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's in this Lou. corner. What and in you this want? corner, we have Steve. <laughs> hey, Steve, how are you? Oh, did we just start already? We sure did. <laughs> Louis, <laughs> right, enough. thank you for having me. Good to see everybody. And I have my second co-host, Melon. Hey there, hey there, hey there. <laughs> <laughs> and we have our guest, Rocio. Huh? Where the cameras at? So. <laughs> They're right there. Everywhere. <laughs> yes, everywhere. The cameras are everywhere. You can yeah. fail. You Got cannot oh, fail. Okay. If you feel comfortable, move, stretch, lay down if you like. No worries. <laughs> this is a, that's going to be a therapy session. Yeah. Is that why? Okay. That's why I'm Wait, on the couch. You're you guys want to find yeah. out? I'm, okay. <laughs> We're gonna he kick. was already like, give me the divulge some stuff over ooh, here. I'm like, oh, give me ooh, a second. He was already dissecting. A little bit, a little bit. It's okay. So. All right, people. So we were actually sitting here wondering, like, what are we going to talk about today? Like, you know, sometimes you get in those little funks where you kind of like don't know what to talk about, right? You're like, hmm, what should we kind of get into? And we made a decision about that, ladies and gentlemen. He sure did. So this evening's podcast is going to be about infidelity. Ooh. Ooh. And cheating. No, all you unfaithfulness. Oh, all that. Dirtiness. And since we have the opportunity to sit with three beautiful women, a woman's instinct, a woman's intuition, her, her, her <laughs> ability to detect That's messed up. dishonesty. <laughs> exactly. Or even a woman's own uh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 abilities for. Infidelity. So we're going to break into it, aren't we tonight? We Lou? sure are. Let we loose, are. Let loose, some fun. We're going to let loose with Lou, Steve, Melon, and Rocio. Keep rolling Let's that get started. Yeah, right. Rocio said that she, we can get into her and talk all kind of stuff. Yes. She let it all loose. <laughs> she sure is. But um, as we were talking earlier, we're going to start with the statement that you had. <laughs> My statement. You are on the spot. It is. <laughs> Tonight we're talking about infidelity yeah. and a woman's infidelity. <laughs> He's Again. all. Okay. I already said it. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I like, we're playing dodgeball. I know. <laughs> Listen, you might be listening to this in a bad reception area. Your cell phone glitched. <laughs> the right? Whitney. That yeah, kind of shit happens. We are <laughs> making twice. sure you are listening. <laughs> they got the cricket internet. <laughs> That's right. They did. Don't get the cricket internet. Don't get the right. cricket internet. So, what questions do you have for us, Steve? Well, let's start with: Have you experienced infidelity? Of course. Absolutely. Have we? Of course. I've, I've experienced it many a times. <laughs> Three? Many more. But yeah. <laughs> so so we're going to let loose. So it goes both ways. You you can have been the cheater or the cheaty. Yes. Um, what what have you guys experienced? What have you done? Have you ever cheated? Have you been, have you been cheated on? Well, I... Hi. Hi. <laughs> well... I wouldn't really call it cheating. I mean, okay, so maybe it is cheating. Let loose. Uh -huh. What we would you still, call it? Unfaithful? We were still married, but, you know, the new the line that a lot of men are using now, we're separated. <laughs> but we still live in the same house. <laughs> and we're still pretty much married, but we are uh, not together. So, therefore, I can go and do what I want to do with who I want to do, but I can't tell him, and he can do what he wants to do, but he better not tell me. So, are we cheating? That's the question. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. Are you guys still? Were you guys still having sex at the time? Um, yeah, when I was hot and bothered, and I couldn't get a hold to a uh, big boy, then I called little man. He come on through. Oh God! Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he rocked my world, and then now we're separated again. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> which one's which? <laughs> the one I was married to. Mm -hmm. um, Number one, two, or three? I'm. I can't divulge that information. Oh, yeah. Because then I'll have to kill someone. No, just kidding. So anyway, but Allegedly. so you, you say that you Allegedly. you were you were getting separated, we and then separated. you got back together. Uh, no, we were separated when we felt like being separated. Okay, that's what I'm gonna use. When it was convenient, we weren't getting along. Like I, I at that point, I didn't like him anymore, mm -hmm. and but he didn't want to leave, and it wasn't the right time for me to leave. So we still are in the same house. 
acting like we were married, <laughs> going on vacation. But I had my little um, boy toy on the side. Ooh. Did he know about it? Of course he did not. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way she rolled that. Of course he did not. Let's stay here, Lou. <laughs> Let's stay here. So, so what, 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 what led up to that? Like, I'm sure at one point the relationship was fine or it was great. What, yeah. What, where did it start to break down where you're like, this is going to be separation. I'm going to get a boy toy. So it probably started when they denied him his Viagra <gasps> and prescription. And so then, you know, everything started going downhill. South. <laughs> and so what ended up happening, for real, being serious, what ended up happening, I was out and I was just having a good time, not looking for anybody. And then I encountered this guy who came and bought me a drink and was really nice. And it didn't happen like right then. We just were talking here and there. We talked, talk, talk. And then um, eventually we started hanging out. And then we started digging each other. And then we started becoming, you know, romantically involved. And at that point, my separation was not, because it's not a separation until you go file the paperwork. So that, technically, I wasn't separated. So we were still in the same house and everything. So I guess that will be considered. I don't know if it was really cheating because we weren't. But you're saying that, like, the answer is your husband was not sexually fulfilling. And he was, like, he was going to Viagra and it just wasn't, you were not able to get that sexual need met. It wasn't some he other. Wasn't matching. No, it was. Needs. Yeah, it was. It wasn't not, some other it was, problem. It was. Yeah, no, it was. It was he became less able to give you the sex you were needing. Well. I think it started with um, the mentally he was not arousing to me, um, you know, because a lot of women, they have to be aroused mentally before anything else. And he wasn't doing, he wasn't that there anymore at that point. He was there, but he was not there. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't getting what I, you what, know. What, 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 what was the mental that was missing? Um, like, for instance, just having conversation um, like warming you up. Telling to the me point. I'm yeah. beautiful. I mean, I don't really need you to tell me that, but I want you to just say it anyway. You want to hear it. Uh, yeah, I want to hear it. I want you to rub my toes. I want you to do the things you did when you got me. And all that stuff kind of disappeared. Stopped. Yeah. And it was more like a chore. And that was not arousing to me at all. So, so do you think that you, because in my experience, I fell out of love. Mm -hmm. well, you're, when you're in love, you're literally no matter what the situation is, it's it doesn't really matter. Like, okay, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. When you fall out of love, that's it. It's like my last relationship. Well, one of my last relationships. Um, <laughs> Gemini. We were together. We were together. You know, seven years, and I was I fell deeply in love, and I wanted everything to work out. We blended a family, everything, and. When he stopped doing like, or really didn't stop, but didn't really fulfill and do what he was supposed to do as a man for me, get a job, help me out with bills. And I'm, I'm struggling by myself, working two jobs. I'm like, if I'm going to struggle with well, it, fuck it. I'm going to, sorry, can I cut No, it? you can cut. Oh, girl, sorry. Girl, oh, let you. it out. I didn't know. God let damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Will you just let it loose? <laughs> I have the worst potty mouth. So just, I didn't. Go, I girl. Maybe I should have said that before. Yeah, yeah, no, now I'm no. mad. Right? Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> Go ahead. It's loose. just like, well, Let no, if loose. I'm going to struggle by myself, then I'm going to struggle alone. Fuck you. I don't need you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get the hell on. And that's when I was still trying to like, okay, let's see. And the whole sex thing came out, came into play. Yeah. And I remember like I figured out, oh, well, we're tonight because I probably want to have sex or whatever. And I remember that I wasn't getting wet. Mm -hmm. So I would literally rub one out. Yeah. Before. Before. So, cause he, there was times where we started having sex and he's like, you're not even wet. I'm like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Maybe I'm just tired or whatever. And I didn't want to do it because I was like pissed at yeah. him. Like you motherfucker. I'm not really, I'm not getting anything from you. Like, why do I want to give you pussy? I don't want to give you right, no pussy. Right. right. I love her. Right. You know what I'm saying? Woo. Right. Right. <laughs> so that until like, and I felt bad. So I fell out of love with him, but I was still trying to make the relationship work mm -hmm. because we had already spent seven years together at that point. And no children? No, we didn't have any kids together. No, girl, they're I got my two sides at 20. Mm -hmm. They're combined. You said you had a, you guys combined your Yeah, families. he had a daughter and I had my four. So that, yeah, we blended our family and it wasn't, that part wasn't hard because I fell in love with his daughter because I was in love with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so 
the hardest part was at the end when I didn't cheat on him, but he says the way he takes it is I cheated on him because I was talking to I, I talk to guys and girls exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And it's not my fault when guys think yeah. a little bit more, but I'll stop it if mm -hmm. I feel like, hey, you know what? It's it's not going there. Yes, yes. But there was one friend in particular mm -hmm. that he and I really did become like really good friends. And little by little, you know, things started happening. And I wasn't fully out of my other relationship, but I hadn't done anything with him until after I had just broken up with my ex. Because mm -hmm. then, but he says, mm -hmm. you had already started a uh, emotional. Chemistry. No, yes. he said you'd already started an emotional cheat. Oh, yeah. Before. And a lot of people, a lot of people say that. That if you it starts emotion, yeah, if you're emotionally attached okay. to someone else, it is a form of cheating. You've already started your cheat right there because now they're you getting your emotions. That's usually how it happens. So I'll just I'll just chime in and say yes. like I think both of you are saying something that's like really juicy and not to be missed. You're saying like the mental went out, right? He just stopped talking to you in a stimulating way, or he stopped like massaging your feet, right? Or like. He, he wasn't her. doing what he was supposed to be mm -hmm. doing. He wasn't, like, helping me out. And I was alone, right? And so the stereotype, which I think really plays, is women have a sexual desire and men have a sexual drive, so right? I, so let me just, just, let me just say yes, one more thing about absolutely. that. Absolutely. Go right ahead. So the drive, I, I, I joke with, with men when, I, when I'm working with them, is, like, you have testosterone, your, your balls are going to fall up. You're going to want to have sex. You're driven to that. But right. you're, but a woman is not that way. A woman has to have her desire induced. And if you don't induce desire, then you don't induce desire, then you don't induce desire. So you have to do certain things like courtship or dating or, you know, these other uh, types of foreplay. And I don't even mean bedroom foreplay, but like no. days leading up to foreplay. Right. And also like doing doing these things, right? Like some sort of protection or providing or these things that you're sort of alluding to, yeah. and that that will induce desire, right? Get the, ideally, the, when but it, it, it may also not. It may also part, not. There's next nothing sexier than than the person you're with because I've been with the female at this point, but the person you're being with and they're doing their part that turns you on. It's just Absolutely. like, oh my gosh, like damn, that that's sexy as hell. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> She's all wait, 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 wait. She's like, er? You said you be you've been with, I've a, been female? with a female. Okay. All okay. Right, well, so well, I heard that, but we're right. gonna get back to that. Yeah. No, but, I don't really yeah, want to. I'm just gonna let her just, get that by. Well, and we want to hear because both I don't want to be like just man. Because at this point, yes. I want to be. I want to be authentic and be honest. Absolutely. I'm gonna be we love that. Yes. yes that's so yeah. I'm vivacious love it. and, and the dynamic. Thank you, Gina. Well rounded, <laughs> sexually versed, <laughs> Rocio. No, I'm really not because. The girl said I never got out of Lesbian 101, apparently. So, oh, And wow. that's okay. That's okay. I was just girl. testing my water. That's so right. I, I played in the minors, never went pro. Yes. That's what I always say. <laughs> wow. That's how, that's how I feel about it. But, but, but well, just to, just to um, go back a little bit, I've always said that women are like cars. You have to start them and give them a little bit of time warm to up. warm them up. Mm -hmm. You know? Because we can't just like, okay – Bam, we're ready. You know, it, it doesn't happen uh, that way. Well, well I mean, there, it, <laughs> yes and no. It, it, it depends on the He's situation, like, right? It, yes, it does. It yeah. does. But there is a, there is a warm up. There, there there's something is. to foreplay yes. and warming it up. Absolutely. And so, in, in the, I would say about 80% of the time, as a woman, we need to get warmed up, right? We need to get that feeling, that blood going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's times where you, you know, you're butt drunk and excited and horny, and you just want to get it out of the, out of the Sometimes way. Sometimes I wake oh, up that way. Had honey. a one night stand. Have you ever had? A, have you guys had one? I've never had a one night stand. Um, I've had two one night stands. There you Ooh, go. I've never on done the same that. night. Hey! Oh, oh <laughs> bam! She had a lot of energy. <laughs> no, I've a lot of Red Bulls. Do it twice. <laughs> I've never. Well, I was a teen mom, so like I didn't have a party life. I think we all were. <laughs> no, well, I lost my virginity at thirteen. Oh, okay. I had my You're first kid at fifteen. Oh, my wow. second at sixteen. Okay, my uh, daughter. You was a real teen mom. Oh, I was. You a was real, a preteen mom. She wasn't talking about a baseball team, <laughs> no, mom. No, I didn't have. Okay, so like a lot of girls that I know that had kids in their teens. Yeah, yeah. They had later. one kid, and yeah. they still went out and partied and all that. Stuff. Okay, I never did any of that. You, you became mom. She meant I was mommy, teen, mommy. Yes, like teen. Well, if I kind of tell you the situation, because yes, infidelity. I experienced it at a super young age. 13. Well, yeah, when I got with my kid's dad, uh -huh. I met him when I was 13. Yes. And when I met him, he mm -hmm. said, there's this girl who's saying she's pregnant. She was 12. He was 15. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's like, there's this, there's my ex-girlfriend. She said she's pregnant. We're not together anymore because I caught her cheating with my best friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. At okay. 12. 
Yeah, at 12. Gosh. And so fast forward, the baby was born and DNA test, it was his. So I, I ended up breaking up with him at the time. I was 13 thinking I'm grown. I know what the hell I'm mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? I want you to give the relationship a chance because yeah. I don't want to be the reason why this baby doesn't have Aww. a family. At 13, you were very like mature. mature. I think I was more mature then than I am now <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. But anyway, um, so yeah, he ended up trying and then we ran into each other three months later and he was like, you know what? I can't do it. I miss you. I want to be with you. Wow. And here I am like, okay, fine. So my stepdaughter, which she's my kid's half sister, yeah. to this day always says, you know, she loves yeah. me very much. Aww. And um, I started raising her with uh, him mm-hmm. when she was only three months old. Wow. Yeah. So let's fast forward a little bit. I lose my virginity. Um, I end up getting pregnant like over a year later and I was like scared. And I did, was like in denial. I'm not pregnant. I'm not pregnant. So I left. And then I ended up finding out that he got another girl pregnant. Oh, my Lord. And his story is that the girl, you know, was a one. They had a one night stand. They were drinking, smoking weed or whatever. They got high. and At 12. No, the other girl was now at this point. She's 14. Because oh, I was 14 okay, that's when better. I got pregnant. Yes. I gave birth at, at So that's like, let me, let me put some realness on this. Yeah. At tw- When you got pregnant, 13? No, I wasn't pregnant until I was 14. She lost her Okay, 14. Yeah, what grade 14. were you in? Eighth. You were in eighth grade. And this yeah. guy was in... Junior high, a no, high school. He was high school. He was a freshman. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. That's... So then, when I gave birth to my son, finally, the other girl gave birth to her kid a month later. Wow. I'm lying. I'm lying. Oh, wow. I'm lying. My son is seven twenty seven ninety seven, and his other son is a August fifth ninety seven. So they're wow. like a week apart. So they're all in wow. school together. Yeah. They, what happened well, that sex occurred so early for you? That's like a real young. You know, I want to say again, for me, my parents went were going through like a horrible. My mom was dying of cancer. My mom actually suffered uterine cancer, and so she was going through a bu- like a lot of stuff. But there, my dad had cheated on my mom, got his comadre pregnant. Mm. So Woo! my dad baptized her son. My dad and my and my aunt baptized her son, and then I remember I was little and I. My dad ended up going to like, oh, I'm going to go see Nacho, the, the kid or whatever. And I'm like, okay, dad, okay, dad. And I would remember one time my dad was sitting on his bed, laying on his stomach, and his feet were like crossed. You know how you know you cross your feet? And I was like, ooh, dad has a girlfriend, never knowing that he really was being with this lady. So then fast forward later, we find out that, yeah, he starts Woman's being with intuition. Her. Well, yeah. And I was so little, I didn't even know. But I think because their turmoil, mm-hmm. um, I didn't have any support. I didn't have anybody telling me, hey, you know, so I really fell for my, well, when my kid's dad was telling me, like, I love you and you're beautiful and you're this. And when you have all this drama going on, you only want to yeah, find some yeah. kind of solace, yeah. right? yep. some kind of happiness. Yeah, exactly. And he you got found it with yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so even sex started. Yeah. Sex started. Yeah. And I didn't, it wasn't like right away because he, he waited almost over a month for the first kiss. Mm-hmm. And then I kissed him and he was like, that's it. I was like, what the hell you want, pussy? Like, it's not going to happen. Like, you're fucking crazy. But, yeah, little, little by little, he, he so went. how was your it. first experience? That What I remember, I was nervous as hell. I was nervous. And I remember I went home and I took a bath. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's, like it's open now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't realize. I mean, it. that could have been, like, a little scary because it, um, it you're was. a virgin. So, you know. Yeah, I bled. Your cherry You could have yeah. passed I bled. out or, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I remember I bled. And yeah. he's, he kept those sheets for, like, the longest time. <gasps> oh. He wrote the date on there. Oh, he's a weirdo. <laughs> oh, at 15 he did that? Wow. Yeah, he was 15. Oh, he knew what he was doing. He wanted to take my virginity. He so did. how many children does he have now? Six. So, Six so Gabby... Children. Gabby's my stepdaughter, my kid's half sister, and then it's my son, and then it's his son, um, and then it's my other, my last three. So wow. I don't think he has it. He, oh, I, so you were with him for a long time? Seventeen years. Wow. You guys never got married? Yes, we did. Oh, you did get married. Okay. Married. Wow, interesting. Yeah, we got married, and then I ended up leaving him in 2011 because he became like a really bad meth head, and it got very violent, very oh. ugly mm. soon. Wow. Yeah. Harley. But That's I mean, it was it. It wasn't. Wow. We didn't have a typical like. We weren't on welfare. We weren't on like like Medi-Cal. The thing, the one thing I got was uh, WIC, because he worked three jobs. WIC is good. Wow. Yeah, no, I but wish he, I can get some. Yeah, me, I still want it now. Shit. Cheese bread. Can I buy somebody's food stamps, please? <laughs> he says on that dollar. Can I get your EBT? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> no, um, but we didn't have a typical. I wasn't. We weren't on welfare. None of that stuff. That shit came later. Mm-hmm. 
But he was like, um, my kids are not going to be raised that way. And he ended up, be, we ended up having a business with FedEx Brown. He was an independent contractor. Wow. Bought the route, bought the that's truck. Beautiful. But see, that's where the drugs came in, mm. at the terminal. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's interesting that your story ended up, because usually at that young age mm -hmm. and having the babies and him having other babies, mm -hmm. it doesn't end up being that the story to that point where you guys actually stay together. Yeah, we stay together. I know. mean, it had yeah. to do, there was fights and there was a lot of baby mama drama. Yeah, because you guys the are babies. Second baby mama, <laughs> the second baby mama was an issue because she went off and had yeah. six 50, kids 50 with more children. five Holy different Holy. guys, I want to say. Some active teenagers, man. Yeah. yeah. Do, you think, do you think that your dad's infidelity and your mom's like illness like inspired you to do the same thing? Or do you think they're just not, they're not related? I don't think I don't think then they were related. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, when I was thirteen, and I think this is something that I think back now, and I worked with a therapist. I've gone to therapy, and he said to me, "I've raised you. You don't need me anymore." I was thirteen when he said that to me. Oh, your therapist? Whoa. No, my my dad. Oh, okay. my At dad 13? said that to me when you were when you were a teenager. Yeah, and wow. so this is everything kind of coincided together. Everything kind of went together where my dad said that to me, and then here I have. This guy that's telling me all this stuff, I'll take care of you and right, all this other right. stuff. So, like, literally, my situation is not ideal, like, at all. No. But I love the fact that my kids, I grew up with my, I've grown up with my kids. Because we yeah. hang out, we go to, we vacation. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been, it's been kind of rough recently. But we had every Tuesday together where we would go and I'd make dinner and we hang out, watch movies mm -hmm. or whatever, game night, take shots together. Like, it's just Crazy people are like because you guys, yeah, like buddies. You grew you up like, the like same, siblings, not yeah. the same age, yeah. but you're, but you know, I mean, like to think back, like all my kids are are successful. My oldest son, he's a teamster. He works for Ralphs and he's doing really well. You know, they're in a union. Um, my second oldest, he's a security for Metro, so he's doing really well. My daughter, she works at St. Jude's Medical Center. She's a pharmacy tech. Wow. And my youngest is actually living in Wisconsin. He's a uh, power lineman. Wow. So I have That's two beautiful. in unions. And I mean, they're all doing really well. My two Which goals. is a blessing in that because yes. no. some of them could have just been really messed up. Well, my, my stepdaughter is actually graduating, I think, college soon. And unfortunately, their stepbrother is in prison right now. Mm. So like he kind of took the other route, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I tried to intervene there. There was one time that Dad was on drug. Moms were on drugs. I was I I I fucked around a little bit with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit here and act all innocent because I'm not. Mm -hmm. But at, there was one point where I was less like, and I had all six kids under wow. my care. Oh wow! And you're super young. Yeah, at the time I was. Well, how old was I at the time? I think I was 25 at the time. Wow. Yeah. So did you did you wind up ending the relationship by cheating? No, no. I ended up by it was it's called a domestic flea. I moved into a homeless shelter with my kids. Okay, because his drug use was so it was so awful. bad. Yeah, yeah, mm. it was awful. Did he ever come back from that? From what I know, my kids don't have a relationship with him anymore. But uh, from what I know, he did. And then I think I want I want to say that he's in he relapsed recently. Mm. But I don't really know the situation because oh, no. I don't care to know. Right. Is he local There's, or? Um, from what I last heard, he was in Compton. Oh, well. see, I, I I grew up in Harbor City, mm -hmm. but I ended up my dad moved us out to uh, Oxnard. And that's when I met their dad. Mm -hmm. And I stayed out there for 17 mm -hmm. years with their dad until I left him and I was at the homeless shelter. Wow. And then I was, I started my Facebook and my friends from junior high and everything, they, I also, you know, we found yes. like friend requests and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, people really remember me. Oh. So one of them was the guy that I ended up seven years with. Mm. And he's the reason I moved back. Oh. He's the reason I moved back to Harbor City. He's like, either I'm moving to Oxnard or you're coming to Harbor City. And I was like, there's nothing good for me in here anymore. So I took a chance. And that's how I ended up getting to become a longshoreman. Oh, nice. So I don't owe him the job because he always tries to be like, oh, because of me, you have that job. I don't owe you shit. I got myself the job. <laughs> you got right. me to Harbor City, yeah. but I got myself. You know? <laughs> don't try to take away from me what I did. Wow. So let me ask you as an underway, what, what, in your opinion, generally, why do, why do women uh, have affairs or... Well, like Are I was saying, why, she, why does infidelity happen from a woman's perspective? I think when you, you you no longer have love and you just kind of find out what's out there, I think that's what usually happens for that. Hmm. I don't know. I just, I always say it takes a lot for a woman to have to cheat on a man. Like you really have to be like abused, you know, to a point where you're so flatlined that you just don't have any more life in you. 
You know, like once I feel like once a woman has no more life, it's like she moves on because it's I don't know. I mean, everyone's different, but a woman's not going to just leave a man. It takes a lot for a woman. And we've discussed Mm -hmm. this before. It does take a lot for a woman to have to leave her relationship. It just doesn't happen. Like, I'll give you an example. With my first husband, um, I never caught him cheating, never caught him red handed. That you always suspected. There was some suspicions. Yes, absolutely. And um, we had some issues. I think, um, I'm trying to think. We had some issues. We went through some retreat, church retreat, to try to make it work out. Um, Things were never the same. Personally, me, once I lose trust in a person, I'm done. You know, that's it for me. I, I, I just, I... Can't be open I can't. and trust. And yeah. I tried. I mean, we went to this, you know, retreat from church and and it just I just didn't feel like it did anything for us. So I always had that that in the back of my mind, but I I still tried. And so a couple of years later, I had this dream as a matter of fact. I had a dream that we had a black two-door Sentra. And this was in the 90s. And so he used to work um, for home, not um, Office Depot. And I was a production um, manager for OP at the time. Or was it OP? I might have been OP. Anyways, I was a production assistant manager for one of the, the companies out there. And so um, I had this crazy dream where... He was in the parking lot of the corner McDonald's of um, Figueroa and I think it's Rosecrans or Redondo Beach Boulevard. It's one of those. And um, that he was in there and he was kissing her. And I was like, I woke up and I was like, well, that's kind of weird that I had that dream because I've never have had a dream that hasn't had some significance. And so... I said, hey, you know what? Um, I had a dream. And he goes, about what? And so I'm a, one thing about me is I'm a vivid dreamer. I could dream about anything that's going to happen to me. Like people that have passed away, they have came to me in my dreams. Um, I've dreamt of certain situations that have <clears throat> happened. So I've always so listened premonitions. to premonitions. Yes, yeah. big time. Like that's one of my things that I've struggled so with. You could have a lot of deja vu. Oh, a lot. A whole lot. And it's weird because sometimes I feel like I want to backtrack, but it's not even there yet. Right. So his brother had committed suicide, right? And I used to dream his brother tell me, like, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Like, help me. Like, please. So I would tell him, like, hey, you know, your brother came into my dream. And he believed all those dreams. But when I told him about the dream that I had, he was like, you're crazy. And I was like, am I? Hmm. I'm like, all right, well, motherfucker, I'm going to show you what crazy is because now you're lying because you believed every other, you know, dream. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now I'm it pertains to, yeah, I'm like, fuck you, motherfucker. It's on. So then I said, okay, it's cool. It'll come out. So that same month I got my American express, um, statement back then the American Express statements were automated. So everything that you bought was line by line, complete detailed. And when we used to go to church, I had a friend who was a florist. So he had bought me a a dozen roses for um, Valentine's Day, right? And um, I was like, oh, okay, thank you. And then he bought, well, I got the statement and it said, okay, a dozen roses and a teddy bear that says, I love you. And so I was like, hmm, teddy bear. I'm like, that. no bear. Yeah, I was like, well, I didn't get a bear. So I was like, maybe, you know, she mischarged us or whatever. So I'm like, hey, hi, Grace, how are you? Good. You know, um, she goes, did you love the flowers? I said, oh, my God, they were a beautiful arrangement. Thank you so much. And she's like, oh, I know he came in. He was all happy. He was so excited to give your daughter that bear. And I was like, 
Oh. Yeah. Which bear was that again? She goes, oh, you know, the one with the little heart that says, I love you? He said that was for his daughter. I said, this motherfucker, right? So I was like, mm, okay. So I was like, all right. The day ends, and I go pick him up from, and I'm hot, right? Because I'm like, you know, he's going to play me here. I'm like, no, nah, that's bullshit. So I pick him up, and I'm like, dude, you know, you fucking lied. Like, you know, and he's like, no, she was down and out. Her boyfriend left her. And, um, you know, story on. yeah, you know, but I felt bad for her. I don't give a fuck. You don't. that's not your problem. Like, no. So. And then I love you. Oh, yeah. It Especially. wasn't like, hey, you're so cute or something. Yeah, nothing. It's like, yeah. So I was just, so that there just ruined like everything and anything I ever had of respect for my marriage. Like, I was like, I'm done. And I, and I was like, I'm just walking away. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm done. I kept taking him back. Oh, fuck. No. So mm -hmm. we had the FedEx route, right? And I was there and I we had I was a runner. Mm -hmm. So when the, really the, in the busy season, like mm -hmm. holidays and everything, um, there's you, it's the driver and then you, there's like a little seat. So I would get to one place and he, he would get to the other, split the, you know, split the, the area. And there was this one place that I could always remember that he would always be like, oh, you know, baby, stay in the car, stay in the truck and just mm -hmm. sort this stuff out. I'm going to go in there, whatever. It never came to mind. Never came to mind. And I remember specifically the um, AT&T bill came in. Mm. This was back then when every text, every phone We're going to talk about intuition and instincts mm -hmm. in a minute. Right? And so it came in, and it was just $500. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, So then I started going, and I started seeing this number over and over and over and again. So I just highlighted it. Mm. And then I called, and I texted it. And... The girl was like, well, who's this? And I'm like, well, how, why are you calling my husband? She's like, who's your husband? And I was like, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then she said, oh, he's your husband? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, he owns the FedEx route. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, yeah, we work for blah, blah, blah. It was, what was the name of Bella Bambini or something like that? It was some kind of. Oh, it was that. Uh, Nerd Ventura. That they were uh, children's um, furniture? No, I think they, uh, they did um, diaper bags. But they're up in Ventura. Our route was Ventura, Ojai. Mm -hmm. That's where that means. So it's like higher end stuff yes. or whatever. Yes. But they worked in the, it's like a seamstress or whatever. They put yes. the bags together. And she was like, oh, I go, you've seen me on the route? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, he said you're his sister. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. And even after that, I was like, I'm done. I'm leaving you, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. And I still took him back. Well, let me tell you my story. Hey. Girl, you're warmed up. Let's go. So it was a fiance. Intuition. My intuition is very powerful. Mm. And it's so bad. My tuition is so, I'm not bad, but good that my stomach hurts. Like knots are <gasps> twirling in my stomach. And as soon as that happens, I won't sleep. I will get up in the middle of the night, all this and so on. So anyway, I had a fiance at the time. And so he was out doing his thing, doing whatever he thought he was doing and thought he, and it was lying to me about the situation, <laughs> right? So I had an intuition. Mm -hmm. And I followed my intuition, mm -hmm. which he lived in L.A. and I lived way in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. So I get up in the middle of the night and I go to his house. And he would not open the door. We rode motorcycles at the time. How I remember so, you riding motorcycles. Yeah. And so he he rented a motorcycle to do this, whatever. But he needed the big one mm -hmm. for what? Didn't need it. So he gets the big one. Mm -hmm. And so when I get over his house, but he goes off, right? Go over his house 3 o'clock in the morning. And I don't see, you know, any sign of anything, but the motorcycle's in the back. So I go around the back, and I look, and there, the motorcycle, two helmets. Ooh. Two helmets, really? Two helmets. Why you need two helmets? It's only one person riding. Mm -hmm. So I look at the, mo the helmet, and it has lipstick on it, because obviously the girl was taking it off, and the lipstick got on it. Okay. All right. So I see what's going on. So what ended up happening, to make a long story longer, um, hey. <laughs> Uh, what ended up happening is I asked him about it. Oh, no, that's your lipstick. I said, dude, I haven't even been on that bike. What are you talking about? Okay, so I see what's up. So I start snooping. I find a number, right? Mm -hmm. This girl's number. I go, oh, okay, I see what's going on. So I call the girl up and I go, hello, hi, my name is Sally and I'm calling from the registry. Um, you, and his name was, I want to say his name. His name was his name was that guy. <laughs> John Doe. Girl, yeah. I said his name. I didn't give a fuck. So that, I'll say his name. His name is weird. His name is James Brown. Oh. That was his name. And he Get down. Name. That was his name, James Brown. And so 
I was like, um, yes, I'm calling from the, the, doc, the doctor's office and James Brown is, <laughs> this was wrong, but I had to get him. Has tested positive for HIV <gasps> and he put your name on the list as one of his sex partners. Ooh. So you need to come down here and get yeah. tested, right? So that's cold. It sure was. Oh, so cold. she contacts one. him. That's hell. That's dope as fuck. And all he could think about. So you call this chick up, Sanders? I said, why would she call you if you weren't messing that's around with right. her? That's right. That was that wouldn't yeah. that have been like oh nothing. Yeah. So that's how I found out that he was cheating, and you know that's when I just like all right, dude, you're I'm out of here. Well, before I cheated on him, then I got left and went out. Because sometimes women do it. They cheat on the guy to get back at them. As because, revenge. As revenge, yeah. So, I mean, I'm on the other side of the spectrum. I have friends where the, <laughs> infidelity was their middle name. <laughs> and some someone would just, one was married and she would just drop her draws to anybody that, that will come and say she was pretty because she's not pretty. Mm -hmm. And I'm not judging looks, but she wasn't. Mm -hmm. So... If a guy, you know, gives her, her attention, she's dropping those draws. And her husband is a good man, a very good man. I know him very well, takes care of the family and everything. But this girl would drop her draws in a, just because. Wow. Makes her feel like. She wants to feel attractive because she, she doesn't feel attractive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. See, Enderline. but you know when so, somebody says, like you just said, he's a good man, but you really don't know anybody unless you're in a relationship with them. No, I know he's a good true. man. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not I can't go that. into Aiden details. No, I no, no. I'm not denying that he's a good <laughs> but, yeah. man. But, because I don't know him. <laughs> but when people say that, because even like my ex is like, oh, he was such good. He's good people. Yeah, that's like, true too. Yeah. And you're like. You don't fucking know. That's true. You don't know what I dealt with. You don't know what I'm like. You know what? I'm not gonna deny he's a good person. Yes. But he's lacking in this. Yes, absolutely. I'm not gonna deny she's a good person. Mm -hmm. But she fucked up here. Mm -hmm. You know what I yeah. mean? But you you don't know anybody fully know someone until your relationship literally day in day out or even absolutely we, like her and I never lived together, but we spent so much time together. It was like we were living together. Mm -hmm. And people can. I mean, there's so many people. But you know, people can say I'm a fucking bitch because you know, say it. I don't give a fuck. So, but, but so I do think this is, a good, I think this is a good segue to really like tackle the second half of the show about instincts and intuition mm -hmm. and like the guts, you know, and I just heard like three great examples. I want to like share this with the, the gang out there watching. It's like you, you had a psychic premonition, mm -hmm. right? You had the instincts, the intuition of like, there's something that's not right. And I know because I never dream of McDonald's. I'm dreaming of McDonald's. So something's oh, got to be. It was so vivid. But you but you had an instinct that like something wasn't right. And you were right. I was right. Right? Or like you're like, my stomach is turning. I don't care if it's three in the morning. I'm going to go check. Mm -hmm. And you were right. Right. And. I was you, too young to ignore. I ignored You the ignored it, which I think is really important. So yes. I, I want to do something that, that I think is really important is like. Just because you have an intuition doesn't mean you're a psychic. Do not fucking mistake the two. Right. 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 And it's the, the difference is if you're overly emotional about something, your your intuition is clouded. Right. Yes. But if 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 you are not emotional and you're having an intuition, you you are probably right. And in my job, part of what I do is I help people separate that. Mm -hmm. You know, and if they're having any if you have any kind of spiritual beliefs, I always say that your intuition is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Right, that like it's about your relationship and being able to hear that separate from your own feelings. Right. And so I think there's something very important about learning to trust it, right? Where I think it's great that like right. you did, right? And you're giving this example of like, hey, this happened. I, I had these mm -hmm. messages that I ignored mm -hmm. and I paid the fee mm -hmm. once and I twice. Think, yeah. Over and over again, like an idiot. But I was so young and my mom probably didn't realize what she was saying to me. Because she was going through whatever. But like I said, I was 13. And my mom, she said it in Spanish. But she was like, when you finally have your man and you're with him, whatever he wants, do it. Just whatever he wants, just do it. Because whatever you don't give him, somebody else will. Can you well, that's true. Spanish? Oh, she goes. <laughs> she, like does Spanish, everybody right? speak Spanish? Yeah. Well, now you're putting me on the spot. I'm Spanish, the same. <laughs> Spanish. 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 She said, cuando tú tienes tu esposo, mm -hmm. hazlo lo que él quiere. Porque lo que no, tú no hagas, so I was like, okay, like I got it. And that would, that thinking about it now, it's like, maybe that's why my dad stepped out. We were talking about earlier, like this is probably another. Do you think that's really true? What? I mean, I think that there are couples that find that their partner has whatever limitation 
And they're like, okay, I, I love you, and I get that you're not going to give me 100% of what I want. Like, you're giving me 85% of what I well, want. Well, see, that's where the love, the actual act of love falls in there because, like, if you're with somebody and they, you know, lose their foot or whatever, you're not going to leave them because they lose their foot. And but maybe I don't, I'm I don't think it's, yeah, I think you're going too I'm far. reaching, yeah. <laughs> what they're saying, more or less, and what I believe, yeah, somebody will give them what they're, like we were having our other previous guests, yes. and the, what you call the um, uh, side chick. Mm -hmm. Because what the side what chick is, will show up, mm -hmm. and everything that the our other guest was saying, that person was not giving them. That side chick is going to give them exactly that because one, she doesn't have to live with them; she doesn't have to deal with all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. So she's going to give all them fun and play. And, and that's it's also all early dating. Early dating is like like same, yeah. The conversation, the back yeah. rub, yes. the, the courting, correct. And and now this girl's doing it, and that's sometimes how. Um, men fall into infidelity mm -hmm. and women fall into infidelity because it may just be that bad month or year. It could be a year and someone slips in and this person just got you. You're giving you everything that you remember you had. Well, is it right? No. Do we control our emotions? Mm. Like you were saying, the men, they're carrying stuff in their, the testosterone and testosterone. And, and their balls. In their balls. <laughs> and or driven. Here come a woman, a beautiful, gorgeous, maybe a woman he's dreamt about. Mm -hmm. right. And here she is. Giving and she's giving me attention. Am I going to say no? Well, nine times out of ten, probably not. Mm. Me as a woman, if a drop dead gorgeous man comes to me. Girl. Oh, I'm giving attention. I'm going to be real. Dwayne, yes. If Dwayne right. Johnson comes my right, way. Right. You, you have a big libido. You, you, you're, you, you have a big <laughs> sex energy, right? Like you, you like, you're, you're more than probably the average woman. Well, I'm taller than the average woman, so. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's all I'm going to leave it at. Like leave it at that. <laughs> But you you're do the math. Gemini, I'm taller girl. than the average. Woo, hot tamale. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that I know we can do that. Right? <laughs> exactly. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I completely understand. But I've fallen into the situation where I was the other woman without knowing it. And then when I found it out, that's when I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Um, How did you not know it? Because I wasn't with the person all the time. You but know. you didn't pay attention to we had our little thing of red flags of no, certain things. No, I think because I was just so busy myself, it was like okay, we'll text here and there or whatever. And then I found out, and then I was like, I'm, I can't do this shit. I'm but not. how did you find out? Um, through a friend of a friend. Mm. Yeah. Did you know? Do you know that? You know, I was like, oh no, I didn't. Wow. Yeah. And how long did he play you for? Um. But it was like two months, three months. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. But did he get you like on a rebound? Like, did you just get out of another relationship? Yeah. Uh, that's usually it. Yeah. Because you're not thinking like. And then I was like so busy with my kids. You know, I was a single mom, so I wasn't paying attention to a lot of shit. But then mm -hmm. I found out and I was like, oh, we didn't, we didn't really do much together. So it wasn't like a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I found out, I'm like, I am not number two, baby. Like, that doesn't work for me. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. No, we only like number ones. <laughs> are you quick to trust is that part of your personality all the time really i feel like i'm very gullible mm -hmm. and i i will you, you put gullible in the in the dictionary you look for it in the, and you see my, pic, my picture like this that's Aww. odd that you're a gemini you're gu i think i'm the only real gemini because real gemini's aren't gullible <laughs> no i feel like i trust i mean i i trust girl people. you were married three times you gullible oh uh. Mm. Maybe I just like marriage. Yeah. <laughs> I did it three. Some people couldn't even do it one. True. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I can admit to being gullible and, and trusting and believing. And well, I, I can Have you guys ever met uh, a person, usually it's a woman, but I, I suppose there's men, but it's mo mo mostly women, uh, that like being the mistress. They like, like, I don't <laughs> want to be in that relationship. I kind of like being in the I've never met anybody other else. seat. Have you? You've met someone like that? I what have. What have you what have like what have you learned yeah, about that too. type of person or personality that like kind of likes that? They don't want the relationship. They just want the all the perks that goes with it, but without it. Well, the, uh, my friend has told me that what she likes about it is that she gets all the fun and the 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 all the fun and the good times and then the wife has to deal with all the other Correct. stuff. Oh shit. So 
that's what she, and she prefers it. She likes it. Um, I asked her that, you know, did her emotions get caught up in it? And it has. She, sometimes she says her emotions. Did you hear that, right? Sometimes it. like they, that mistress, or we'll call it just for sake of the conversation, that mistress likes that, right? I get all the perks, the, the dinners, the fun nights, the mm -hmm. cool stuff, the great sex, and then I can say goodbye and you, you know, you deal with, you know. Right. She can deal with the rest. Right. But there are also the feelings where, where, where it's like, ah, I, I want a little bit more of that. Yeah, holidays. But, but most, felt, most of those yeah. of those people, they like the excitement. They get the fun. Yeah, they get, they get the fun. They, they, they like the fun and the perks. With that fun, though, comes a lot of um, sadness, though, because you think about it, it's only fun when it's that Happening. time. But then, like she They're said, during home. the holidays, like the more significant times, you're alone. Yeah. You're just yeah. Unless you're that one, which I do have one, and that's what, that's what she likes. Mm -hmm. And then she just goes to the other one when that one couldn't, can't be around. So she has multiple. Mm -hmm. She's a multiple mistress. Multiple mistress. <laughs> yeah. For hire. We, yeah. We Not need right. her. So Listen here, what do you, miss. What, <laughs> is that really like, what do you like? What do you think about, is that close to, it's like the groupie, like the, the girl that goes to, they know, like, for example, the Chicago Bulls are in town or the Atlanta Hawks are in town. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. there's that, that, that type of personality of women who likes that. Like, maybe I can date this guy for a night or maybe I can get some sort of perk from this, you know, guy. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a same animal or different? I want to say, I mean, I don't know anybody like that, but there's that um, one girl who dated all kinds of celebrities and she wrote a book about it ooh. and put their, all their business out. What was her wow. name? Okay, Solomon, do your magic over there. I don't know. Like, I have two. I, well, one was a friend, and um, I knew that she loved um, sleeping with married men, but then she became so psychotic that she stalked them. And then I knew that she, I knew that she would call their wives and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, like, how can you put so much energy in she? Fatal attraction kind of shit, huh? She's a total. She is a total. She has. I just watched that movie recently, and I was just like. Huh. I love that movie. Yeah, she has issues. <laughs> oh, I really do. <laughs> but you know, her motive was. Why was that okay. such a thrill? So does Acme. I think. I don't. <laughs> I've only watched if it was so movie. much a thrill. And there's a two. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, we're talking about that. I mean, I, I, we're going to have to watch acrimony. it. Oh, okay. We'll have to watch that. But um, in her case, I don't, I know she had a lot of um, daddy issues. Her dad wasn't in her life. And then she had a step, a step um, father. And um, yeah, I don't know. She just had a lot of issues. And um, I thought you know, her name was Corinne. I, she just went through a lot. And it's sad because, um, you know, she has daughters and, you know, what are her daughters going to learn from her? You know what I'm saying? Like, or instill, I don't know. I just. I wanted to bring up another thing about um, being the mistress. The sex is amazing. It's totally different when you're a mistress because I'm, this is from a friend. <laughs> yeah, what is, the, what is the difference? I mean, I, I can imagine, but I want to hear it. Like because, like, they're letting loose. Mm. Not with Lou, but they let loose. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> like you they're go. They're able to go, do with you all, what they've never been able to yeah, do. Yeah, yes. And like if quick, they're very right? conservative like, with their wife, mm -hmm. then they're just getting it on just freaky deaky with that mistress. And it's and time the woman too. And, that makes so much sense. But she enjoys it, mm -hmm. regardless, because that's like, and to her, that's the best sex because mm -hmm. these are two people just getting they're it on. And the no thoughts of what he's thinking of me. I mean, you just do every. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what she. Well, heard. So that brings me back to what my mom told me because. Her telling me whatever your your man wants, give to him mm -hmm. because whatever you, I, you won't do, somebody else will. So that tells me that my mom must have been a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if she was approved because she had six kids, and we <laughs> we call her Superhead because I, you know, we all got it from somebody. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, you could give your. I mean, you can give your husband everything, and I did. Yeah. So mind See, you, I was with I their dad for seventeen kids. years, yeah. and I remember being that one. However he wanted sex, whatever he wanted, he got it. But you're he, not a, the other woman. To have a different woman. Okay, I understand. That, I mean, that's why you have the men that want to do threesomes. Mm -hmm. Like, the, oh, threesome, that's what I need to do. I, I got to have, I got to do it. That is like a dream in their mind. That Was that? Is that true? Yeah. I'm thinking of something else. I'm listening to you. I'm, 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 <laughs> well, I'm actually, I'm, I have a different thought. But finish yours. But that's life. like a dream in their head to have another woman in the room with, in the bed with them. Now, I know... Some women go for it, and some women won't. 
And then some women that have end up with them. So we go on your thing. End up with that woman and then the guy, bye bye, which has been lately a <laughs> lot of situations. Ciao, ciao. Yeah, ciao, ciao. Yeah. So I, I think a point that I think is maybe important to say on the podcast is familiarity, right? Mm -hmm. Like the relationship goes on and the sex isn't new. Like the conversation isn't new. Right. And so you can't stimulate this infatuation, this big pheromone release, or like, you know, the sex becomes routine. It's, you know, it, it's done this way over and over again, or one partner doesn't like to do this and the other partner does or vice versa, right? And then to your point, like the, the person who's going to cheat is probably going to get to have this wilder pheromone release, chemistry, hotel sex that's just isn't that's just not going to happen in the marriage and so for like the person who likes being the mistress that's like that's the drug like they, they get to have these exciting Adren exciting dr nights. adrenaline mm -hmm. yeah so the what do they call them so like endorphins yeah they start rolling and so a lot of um it's just that it's not and sometimes men or women cheat and there's nothing wrong with their spouse and i try to tell this to a few of my friends like swear at my Never, never. And guess what? They found out later on. Yeah. And I would never thought their wife was, was cheating. And she was because women are really good at it. <laughs> and the reason why women are so good at it is I'm going to give the secret. Women cheat and they act like the same. They never change their pattern. They do the exact same thing. If they call you every moment, they'll call, answer the phone, whatever. Men, when they cheat, their habits change. Mm -hmm. And it makes a woman say, Say my name. Hmm. He's never, Bob never won a second cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that commercial you been. Yeah. So, so funny. So, so, but that's true. And, and if, and I try to tell my, I have a lot up. of male friends. And I said, if you want to get away with cheating, you got to keep doing the same thing you've done every day. If you call your woman at this time of day, call her. If you say good morning, don't stop. They'll stop saying good morning because their the focus secrets. is now, the focus is now on this other woman, which makes them forget what they normally do. Whereas a woman usually, don't forget, she keeps doing, hey, babe, how you doing? How you doing? Okay, yeah, okay, I'll be home for dinner. Bye. I, told you all that. <laughs> I, had, I had a friend that act, that actually happened. Yeah, she said that if her husband called, she didn't care. She would answer the goddamn phone, doing it or not doing it with that other person. And I was like, how the hell do you get away with shit like that? And she got away with it. Well, that was a pro tip right there for the players out there. <laughs> We're going to do that. <laughs> Don't change your routine. Yeah. And that's they real. Go away. Yeah. Because that's, so I, that's how, like, my thoughts immediately, if I'm dealing with someone and they're not doing the same thing that they've routine. always done, I'd be like, mm, mm -hmm. mm, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, boo-boo, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> She's good at Next. That. Yep. <laughs> Well, this has been a very interesting episode. As always, we always have good talks. I really enjoy this. And, Rocio, I, I really want to thank you for coming along and um, giving us your experience. Thank you for the invite. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if I added or. Oh, my God. No, it was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. <laughs> it, it, a pleasure meeting all of you. Oh, pleasure. It was mine. Pleasure. Yes, absolutely. What do you think, Steve? Thank I'll work so on my wardrobe, Steve, okay? Because I know you were kind of giving me shit about that. <laughs> Yeah, that penalty. How about a little effort next time? <laughs> Just a little bit. A little I bit. didn't. Nobody, nobody Girl, said anything. Do you not carry a hoochie bag in your trunk? I don't carry a oh, hoochie bag. Oh, you need to have your. Uh, 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 I okay. got the pretty panties on. Oh, I mean. girl. Let's see. We don't believe it. Hey. <laughs> That's a different episode. That's a different episode. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Thursdays, uh, Malone's Boutique. Oh, she yeah. has a lot of cute stuff. I do, girl. Uh -huh. You'll be ready okay. Thursday night. So Facebook cute. Live. Are you gonna bring me? Are you gonna bring me something cute? No, you go on Malone's Boudoir Boutique and you find. I show live. I show outfits. Oh. Yes. And, and then you, she'll bring it to you. Yeah. And then yeah, I'll Maybe bring after I have that BBL because I'm not doing that now. The BBL ends up down at your knees. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I've had four kids, honey. You look great. You look great. Thank but you. Any closing thoughts? No, I would just say that this was a great episode. You know, always interesting to talk about sex, talk about infidelity, to talk about relationships, Wait, why it happens. And I, I enjoy to, you know, get the perspective from from the three of you and I look forward to more conversations like this. Absolutely. I think it was a great one. Thank you, Milon. Thank you, Rocio. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Mm. You guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys were intrigued with our episode. 
And um, we will see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow. Share, and share, share. Oh, yes. Please share and comment. Unless you know me, don't share. No, <laughs> just kidding. No. Just kidding. All right, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> That's all for today. Thank you for watching and listening. It truly means the world to me. If you enjoy the show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe at Let Loose With Lou on Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify.